From a dead whale found with 88 pounds of plastic in its stomach. The grocery bag. To small shrimp-like amphipods eating microplastics deep in the Mariana Trench. We have a serious marine plastic pollution problem. An estimated 8 million metric tons of plastics enter our oceans every year. This problem feels overwhelming. But at the same time, I know we have to figure this out. So, how do we fight marine plastic pollution? To find out, I learned about plastic pollution firsthand at a beach cleanup. And later, I talked to the founder of Parlay for the Oceans to understand how industry is rethinking plastic. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. Marine plastic pollution is comprised of single-use items like soda bottles, straws, plastic bags, and commercial fishing nets and lines. The problem is that plastic doesn't naturally break down. Instead, it breaks up into smaller and smaller microplastics. It's estimated there are trillions of plastic particles in the ocean. This is alarming because animals are mistaking plastics for food. An estimated 90% of seabirds have plastic in their stomachs. And there's a chance we're eating it too. One scientist at Columbia University found microplastics in the gut of shrimp she bought at a fish market. I've decided to attend a surf rider beach cleanup so I can better understand the connection between litter and marine plastic. But before we get started, I'm going to talk to Mike Castellano, who organized the event. So tell me about Surfrider. What is your organization? Uh, so the Surfrider Foundation is a national uh, nonprofit. Uh, we pretty much are based on clean oceans, clean beaches, public access, healthy beaches, healthy ecosystems. And why is plastic pollution such a big part of the Clean Oceans Initiative? Obviously, plastic is destroying ecosystems, marine life. Fish are swallowing it. We're ingesting it. It's breaking down in the water, and plastic needs to be away from the oceans. And why why are uh, beach cleanups important? It's to raise awareness, which is number one. You know, you okay. get people out and you get to experience it firsthand, see how bad the problem is. And then number two is we collect data. We can use specific bag data from a beach and say, hey, we collected this many bags last year. Nice. Um, and this is why you need to really? get rid of it. Yeah. And so if you bring facts to the table, uh, things happen. The one small step that people can take is to focus on minimizing your plastic use. This oh. is what they find in fish in their stomachs, in birds' stomachs. Um, you're not going to find a water bottle in there, but you will find a piece of plastic or maybe even a bottle cap. But this is the stuff that gets eaten. Um, and this is the stuff that ultimately will make it to your dinner plate. It gets inside the stomach of a fish. It's crazy. Like, that's what I, and this is what I mean. Is you see things. Is this it? You, this that, is. Just, this is plastic, too. Yeah. So we just walked over it, too. It's crazy. It kind of blends in. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You bat an eye to it because you're like, oh, and that's what's scary about the styrofoam is styrofoam resembles broken seashells. And so it's very hard to, like, decipher between the two. So it seems like most of it is plastic. Yep. Plastic is in everything. Everything's made with plastic. So yeah. you have plastic lids. You have plastic wrappers. Everything you eat comes in plastic. Yeah. Everything you get to drink at restaurants comes with plastic straws. Everything that you drink out of comes with plastic lids. Yeah. Plastic caps and plastic rings and plastic everything. So this is another thing that I feel like people can do easily. You can ban the intentional release of balloons, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like somebody released this at a party somewhere. Yeah. And it made its way here. Where else is it going to end up? So now is all this just going to go to the dump? Um, so this will go to a reclamation center uh, okay. where they'll do their best to get rid of what they can. But if it has dirt on it, if it has yeah. food on it, it's, again, it's not recyclable. And so just to the dump, it'll go. It's surprising that even at a beach that appears spotless, there are small pieces of plastic everywhere. To solve the world's plastic problem, we need more than small steps. We need big thinkers innovating to find solutions. That's why I'm excited to talk to Surya Gush. He's the founder of Parlay for the Oceans. Their entire mission as a company is to get industry to rethink plastic. They've collaborated with big companies like Adidas, Corona, and American Express. Why did you choose to go the route of really targeting these big companies and getting them to change? I felt that environmentalism in its old form of throwing shame and blame was not getting us fast enough to where we need to be. So the industry is really the problem. Right. But if you want to change them, the best thing you can do is pick one in each sector and make them a champion. Go really deep with them, change everything with them. Yeah. And define a new standard. 
all the other guys have to follow. And they already are. And so you've worked with many companies to make this change. So how is that going and what have you guys accomplished? The first one was the hardest to get. That was yeah. Adidas. It took us two years. They committed to a 10 year agreement with us. So the first step was they phased out plastic wherever they could, where it's easy for them. Plastic bags, all the straws, bottles, whatever they could find. Right. But then they would phase out microbeads out of their body care products. But now they committed to phase out virgin plastic, that means new plastic, out of their products by 2024, mm -hmm. converting completely to recycling. And a big part of that will be Palais Ocean Plastic. So what's this? That was the first shoe we ever made with Adidas. So all of the plastic on here is retrieved ocean plastic or most of it? The whole upper okay. is made from marine plastic debris. Wow. The green is coming from fishnets, and the white is coming from bottles that we retrieved in the Maldives. And how does that work? You're collecting it, and then you're processing it? So there are different ways of collecting plastic. Okay. Um, some is coming from the beaches. Mm -hmm. uh, others is coming from the high seas, like fishing net, discarded fishing net. Right. Or fishing net that our partner organizations, like Sea Shepherd, uh, confiscate. Okay. We turn all that plastic trash that we find out there into new material, okay. into yarn, into fabric, and then it finds its way into new product. Mm -hmm. And a product made from Palais Ocean Plastic is contributing to our movement. Mm -hmm. It's supporting us, it's funding us. Okay. And that was the whole idea, that we're turning this trash into a value that allows us to fuel our movement. So I was always taught reduce, reuse, recycle. Do you think that that system is still great for what we're going through right now? I think the three R's yeah. are a big hoax. <laughs> they pretty much say the material is okay, we're not using it right. Got it. The truth is the material is not okay. Plastic is toxic. And our answer is a new strategy. Okay. It's called air. Avoid plastic, intercept plastic wherever you can, and use it instead of making more new plastic, and the R, redesign the material, redesign products. And of course, the plastic industry doesn't love that strategy. Yeah. Because they invested a lot of money in all these facilities, and they want to keep this technology in place as long as they can. So the best you can do is using your voice. Right. Sending a super strong signal saying, I want out. Mm -hmm. I don't want these products anymore. And that is what we believe has the strongest power at this point is people speaking out for what they want and what they don't want. Yeah. They don't want to be lied to anymore. It was so inspiring to talk to Surreal and really understand and see his vision for how industry and creatives can solve this marine plastic pollution problem. And understanding that we can all be empowered if we just take action. The one small step I recommend to take is ban the plastic bottle out of your life. And pick a reusable bottle and make that your personal flag and fly that flag with pride. I love that. I already do it, so check. <laughs> I'm eliminating plastic by using a reusable water bottle. What are you doing to fight marine plastic pollution? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this, please subscribe. See you soon.